welcome to this week's Discovery Kids Online. How are you doing? Whether you're here with us in Cable's house or you're watching from home, you are so very welcome. We are really excited to have you with us today. I hope also that you're really looking forward to half term. Dan, what are your half term plans? Oh, you've started something new. Oh, a new challenge going on for Dan. Okay, what have you been working on? Oh, Dan is trying to learn all the books of the Bible in order. Wow, that is a serious challenge, but it's not going very well. Oh, Dan, you've just got to keep at it. Sometimes we try things that are new and it can be really difficult. But actually, if you keep practicing, keep working on ways to remember, maybe make up a song or draw the words out or something like that to help you, you'll get there in the end, won't you, Dan? Maybe you could try learning the books of the Bible over your half term too. I hope I've encouraged you a little bit by saying that, though, Dan. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Well, this week we're looking at our very, very last hero of the faith. I know. Ah, oh, can I get an ah? Oh? Ah! Oh, come all the way through so many different heroes, but we've come to the end of this series. So, if you remember, the last couple of weeks we've been looking at somebody called Paul. Well, he was called Saul. And after he'd had that dramatic conversion, instead of going around saying he hated Christians, he then started going around, going around telling everybody that Jesus, well, he is the son of God. That was amazing. And we learned a little bit about Paul and Silas being in prison last week too. But this week's hero, well, originally his name was Joseph. But his friends, Jesus' disciples, they changed his name. They gave him a nickname and they called him Barnabas, which basically means son of man of encouragement. He's all about encouraging other people, kind of like I was doing with you when you were learning your books of the Bible, Dan. Now, Barnabas was around when Paul was around, and actually he was someone that stood up for Paul, even when other people weren't so sure whether Paul actually was a genuine Christian or not. Barnabas was a really interesting character. He encouraged others, he cared for others, and he was super generous with his time and with his money too. But we're gonna learn loads more about him a little bit later on. Did you know that money there, Dan? Very good, you're generous with your money too. And your chocolate? Not so much chocolate. Well, we'll find out more about Barnabas' life a little bit later on. But why don't we pray before we worship? Here we go. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to learn about this final hero of the faith. We thank you so much for this amazing series where we've learned about so many different fabulous Bible characters who have taught us so much about what it means to be a hero of the faith. We pray today you'd help us as we learn about Barnabas, as he encouraged others that we would be just like him too. We pray we'd have so much fun with all the activities, the games, everything that we do. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, well, why don't you get yourself up on your feet, get yourself some space, encourage the person next to you to take part in worshipping and let's sing together. We say yes. Here we go. choose to serve you, to follow where you lead, to be your witness, to be your hands and feet. We say yes, my soul says yes, whatever you have for me, whatever lies ahead. We say yes, my soul says yes. Whatever you have for me, whatever lies ahead, we say yes. Oh, we say yes. In every season, we can trust in you. For you are with us, you are always good. We say my soul says yes, whatever you have for me, whatever lies ahead, we say yes. My soul says yes, whatever you have for me, whatever lies ahead, we say yes. Oh, we say yes. We know that you are for us, not against us, not against Not a 
against us, not against us. We know that you are for us, not against us, not against us. We know that you are for us, not against us, not against us. We say yes, my soul says yes, whatever you have for me. Whatever lies ahead, we say yes. My soul says yes. Whatever you have for me, whatever lies ahead, we say yes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. My soul says yes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. My soul says yes. So this game is all about exploring where you are. So, run and touch all four walls. Go! Now curl up as small as you can in the space so you're the smallest thing in the room. And then make yourself as big as you can so you fill the entire room. Wonderful. Now touch the floor. Touch the ceiling, touch the floor, touch the ceiling, go on right up as high as you can off the shot. Fantastic. Now, how many objects can you touch in the room in 30 seconds? Are you ready? Keep your own score. Go! Time is going. That's it, you've had 10 seconds. 20 seconds to go, go and touch, make sure you've touched everything in the room. 10 seconds left, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, yes! Give me a wave if you touch 10 things in the room. Wave with both hands if you touch 20. And jump up and down if you touch more than 20 things in your room. Fantastic, that's brilliant. Now, if there is anybody else in your room, clear them out. Clear the space of people so we have an empty room. Now fill it with people. Get as many people as you can into that space. Fill the space up. Fantastic, very good. Touch all four walls again. Round you go. Ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, and fold your arms. Hello, everyone at DK. I hope you're doing well. I've got Monkey with me today. Say hello, Monkey. A Monkey's come to me with a little bit of a problem. Yes, I'll tell them. Monkey is trying to do his maths homework and he's really struggling. Let's have a look. Hmm, what do you think? Now these may look easy to you, but to Monkey, he's having a bit of difficulty. So I really want to encourage him. And while I encourage him, why don't we just listen to a story about another hero of the faith? Somebody who was known as a great encourager. See you later. Come on, monkey, let's get cracking. The story today is taken from the book of Acts and is about a man called Barnabas. You may not have heard of him before. Well, not all heroes of the faith are well known. But at that time, Barnabas came from Cyprus to Jerusalem. He was a Levite, but he wanted to join the Christians. And so, although his name was originally Joseph, he took the new name of Barnabas because it means encourager. So what is an encourager? 
Well, it's somebody who is supportive and helpful to someone else and cheers them on to do their best. We all need people like that in our lives. Perhaps you know somebody who's recently entered the marathon. Just think of the crowds of people that were encouraging them to do their very best and make it to the end. Or maybe you have a favourite teacher at school, somebody who cheers you on to do well, somebody who helps you and supports you. These people are great encouragers. So back to Barnabas, he was a great encourager. He liked to cheer people on. He liked to get people to do things that they never imagined were possible. Now at that time, the Christians in Jerusalem all lived together in one place and they shared everything they had. Some of the people had very little food. Some people had no food at all. Some people had no possessions, no clothing, no places to live. It was a very, very difficult time for them. Barnabas really wanted to help. He decided to sell everything that he had to support and help the people, anybody in need. He gave all his money to the people. And not just that, he did it willingly. He encouraged the people to keep going. Barnabas had land and property and he sold everything he could because he really believed in the Christian way of life. He believed in Jesus. He knew that Jesus had died for our sins and he wanted to lend all his support to the Christians in Jerusalem. He was also a man that was full of courage. Last week, you had a story about Paul. This is my picture of Paul. You may remember the story. Paul was previously called Saul and had a dramatic encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus and it changed his whole life. He went from being somebody who hated Christians to somebody who wanted to share his life as a Christian and to help other people to join them. But when Paul went to the Christians, they were very afraid of him. They couldn't believe that this was the same man that had tried to kill them before. It didn't matter what Paul said and the story that he told them. They really were very, very worried. In fact, they ran away. They did not believe that he had changed. He'd been so mean to them in the past. How could he suddenly be a friend and a follower of Jesus? They just couldn't believe it. Barnabas came along and stood up for Paul when nobody else did. Let's give Paul a chance, he said. He was completely changed on the road to Damascus. I mean, what other reason would there be for him changing his ways? He really encouraged the people to trust Paul and at the same time to trust God that Paul had been totally changed. That was a brave thing to do. Barnabas was courageous and an encourager and he always saw the best in people, even in Paul. What an amazing man Barnabas was and probably somebody that we haven't really heard about, but he was a real hero of faith. So Monkey, how have you got on with your homework? Let's have a look. Hmm. Well, Monkey, you got two out of three right, and that's very, very good. But you just need to work a little bit harder on this sum at the bottom. But keep going, keep trying, you're doing great. We want to encourage people like that. Maybe there's somebody you can encourage today, somebody that you can cheer on. So have a think about that. Maybe you can be a bit of a Barnabas. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that in our lives we can be encouragers, just like Barnabas was. Help us today to encourage somebody as they walk with Jesus, or maybe they don't know Jesus and we can encourage them to get to know him a little bit better. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This week, we've got a brand new slot for you. We've been out interviewing people from across our church who we think and done things are real life heroes of the faith. 
So let's go over to one of them now and find out why they are a hero of the faith. Here we go. Right, we're here with another hero of our church. This is Josh. Josh, tell us what you do. All right, so I'm currently involved in the tech team, one of the stream producers. Sometimes you might see me on the camera. And I have also had some involvement with the youth team recently. So that, those are the different things I'm involved in at the moment. Cool. And how do you find it being involved in all these things? Why do you do it? Well, I, I guess I do it because I see the church that I'm a part of, this church, being a family. And it's just, my, it's just how I can serve my family. And I think you know, Jesus, for us, is a great example of a servant. He came to serve. That's, that's how he led. So... I just, I mean, I'm encouraged by that, and that's one of the things that motivates me. Cool. To get involved. And what do you think makes a hero of the faith? Oh, this is a good question because I think we can look at heroes as people who are the leaders. You know, they're the ones who step up, they rise to the occasion. But I recently have been thinking about actually how it's, you know, those who who might have a weakness. Well, I've I've got many weaknesses that I'm aware of, and I think I think heroes are those who, in spite of those weaknesses, especially in the context of trusting God, are able to hold on to God and just go after things. So I think, yeah, that's sort of, that's the answer. Awesome. And do you have a favourite superhero generally? Oh, that is a tough question. I think that my favourite superhero at the moment, oh, you know what, you're really, really challenging me. I am a massive fan of Black Panther. I don't know why. I think it's because he's, he's got like, he's a bit like a panther. You know, he's really agile and I wish I could be him. So there you go. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much, Josh. Another hero of our church. Hi.
Barnabas. What a hero of the faith. What a good one to end on, Dan. He was obviously someone who saw the good in others and encouraged them with his words. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been called an encourager. He wouldn't have been called Barnabas. But he was also an encourager with his actions. He was willing to sell one of his fields to help the other followers of Jesus. And he was so generous in giving his money away too. Barnabas devoted his life to following Jesus, not worrying about the cost to himself. And he was also someone who was willing to stand up for those who he felt deserved a second chance, just like Paul. Barnabas was a good friend. He was an encourager. He showed courage. He wanted to tell others about Jesus. He was generous. He was willing to give others a second chance. And he put Jesus first. Don't you want to be just like Barnabas? Definitely. If your friends were going to give you a nickname, what do you think they'd call you? Would it be generous, kind, courageous, strong, brave, full of joy? Maybe, just like Barnabas, your friends would say you too are an encourager. Well, in a minute, we're going to pray. And then, if you're in Cable's house, you're going to get into one big circle. And we're going to practice encouraging others. The GK leaders are going to explain a little bit about what you're going to need to do. But, if you're watching from home, here's a challenge from Dan and I. Today, go and find somebody, maybe a brother or sister, a family member, a friend, and practice either saying or doing something encouraging to them. Go and be a Barnabas in everything that you do today and see if you can do that throughout this week of half term too. You up for encouraging others, Dan? Excellent. I hope you give it a go as well. Well, why don't we pray before we finish? Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to learn about Barnabas, for the fact that he encouraged others in their faith, in so many different ways. He encouraged people to know about Jesus and we pray that we too could be like Barnabas. We would encourage people in the things that they're doing but also be confident in telling them about Jesus too. We pray you'd help us this half term to keep remembering all those different heroes of the faith that we've looked at and try ourselves to be more like a hero of the faith too. We pray all of these things in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Next week, we're going to be looking at why our God is bigger than Halloween. It's going to be really interesting. So make sure you tune in. But before we finish, Dan and I have got one very important announcement. Dun, dun, dun! We're really good at announcements, aren't we? This is your very last day to book yourself a ticket for the Hallelujah Party. It's next Saturday, the 30th of October from 4 till 6 p.m. There's bouncy castles, there's craft, there's activities, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of sweets. You do not want to miss it. So make sure you get your grown-up to speak to Andrea Willis to get your ticket or email info at livecc.org.uk. You really, really don't want to miss out. We're going to be there you better be there too. Well, that's definitely all we've got time for today. So let's finish with our memory verse. This is the last chance you've got on this one. And I know loads of you have learned it already. So here's one final reminder from Dan. And I hope that you can remember it and get yourself a prize from his prize box too. And we will see you hopefully at the Hallelujah party, but if not, very, very soon. Take care. Bye. You dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4.